Is it safe to delete duplicate files? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com where I've been answering questions since, well, 2003. A very common question is in fact today's. Is it safe to delete duplicate files? There are so many utilities that offer to do this for you. And there are some pitfalls that I seriously want you to think about before you dive in. My bottom line is no, unless you really know what you're doing and you're really trying to solve a problem. No, don't delete duplicate files. Let me explain why. Installing programs in Windows is, to put it bluntly, a mess. And I say that having watched it evolve over the last, heck, 30 years. The problem is a very real problem that many pieces of software have tried to solve in many different ways. The problem is now being solved in all these different ways at the same time. What is the problem? Well, let's look at a couple of programs. I will call them Program A and Program B. They are two different programs from different vendors. These programs share a common library. I'll call it stats.dll. Maybe they're both mathematical, statistical packages or whatever. They are unrelated to one another, but because of the way that they were developed, they both use this one library of common statistical functions. So when you install program A, it installs stats.dll. Great. It's working. It's great. Now, when program B comes along, then does it or doesn't it install stats.dll? One approach is no because it's already there. There is no need to install this common library of software because it's already been installed. So B comes along, notices that stats.dll is there and doesn't install it. Here's the problem. If either program needs to update and that update involves a newer version of stats.dll, well, it's going to get updated for both whether or not the other program wants it. So if A gets updated and that update includes an update to this common library of software, B is getting that update, whether or not it wants it, and worse, whether or not it will actually work with the new version of that common library. It is very common, unfortunately, for changes in a common library to cause unanticipated side effects, I'll call it that way, incompatibilities from one version to the next. The right thing to do, of course, would be to update both A and B simultaneously so that they both use the most common, most current version of this statistics package. The problem is, of course, you can't make that happen. You can't force that to happen. And in fact, B, the manufacturer of B, may not even be in business anymore. You're stuck with whatever it is. So. Having identified that as a problem a long time ago, what many software vendors do is instead of installing a common copy of stats.dll that can be used by everybody, they install one that is private to them. So that means A comes along, installs itself, and installs its own copy of stats.dll. B comes along, you install it, it installs its own copy of stats.dll in a private location. You now have two programs independent of one another. They don't have this shared dependency on this shared library of code because they each brought their own. If A needs to update, it can update its copy. If B needs to update, it can update its copy. They're not going to come into conflict. But you may have two copies of stats.dll on your machine. In fact, you may have two identical copies of stats.dll on your machine. Is that a bad thing? Not really. I mean, it's contributing to the stability of these programs that are using it, but it's a duplicate file. It's technically taking up a little bit of extra disk space. 
but your system's more stable because of it. That's an example of a duplicate file you never want to delete. If you delete A's copy, a stops working. If you delete B's copy, B stops working. The fact is you need both copies of that file in those two different locations so that A and B will continue to work. Now, that's the worst case scenario. That's the scenario that worries people like me deeply because there are a lot of duplicate files on your system. There just are. And the problem is, of course, deleting the wrong ones can well, it can cause programs to stop working. In the worst case, it can stop Windows from working because Windows itself has a bunch of different duplicate files for a variety of different reasons. Here, then, you're faced with this problem. Do I or do I not delete this duplicate file? This is why I say it's so important for you to, if you're going to go down this path, really understand what it is you're doing. The more common scenario that people come to duplicate file finders for are things like having multiple copies of pictures or music on their machine. And honestly, that's probably kind of sort of safe to do. It's kind of sort of safe to delete your pictures if you've already got a copy of it somewhere else. It's not going to destabilize your system. But if there's multiple copies of a picture on your machine, how do you know which one is the one you want to keep? If you've got thousands of these things, how do you know which one it is in each case that you want to keep? That actually turns into an awful lot of work, an awful lot of effort, and you still may not end up with the results you want. You could end up deleting the copy in the folder that you use all the time accidentally because there happened to be a duplicate copy of the image in a browser cache or in some other programs cache or in a folder that eventually gets deleted because that's the way you use your machine. Again, the risks are high. The risks for data loss are high when you start looking at duplicate files. It's just not that easy to tell what's safe to delete. My advice, don't. Just don't. If you're facing a disk space problem, which is, again, where a lot of people come to duplicate file finders, then I honestly suggest you try either of two different remedies. One, look for large files. Use tree size view free, I think it's called. It's something that will show you which files, which folders are taking up the most space. Prioritize your efforts and tackle those things that are going to get you the biggest bang for your buck. You'll often find that there are folders full of stuff that you don't need or you don't care about, or one of the sets of all those duplicate images is a temporary file that just never got deleted for some reason. It's that kind of targeted research that is your best bet for freeing up disk space. If that doesn't work for you, honestly, that's when I start looking for bigger disks, either replacing your existing disk or getting an additional disk to move some of your data to it. It is so much easier and honestly so much safer than randomly deleting duplicate files. It's something that I strongly encourage you to do if you run into problems, and I strongly discourage you from trying to delete duplicate files, especially, especially if you're not absolutely certain you know what you can and can't delete. I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you some guidance. There will be related links, especially to the, um, the article about finding where the issues are on your hard disks, finding out what's taking up the most space. As always, for the article on which this video was based, for up-to-date links, for comments, for any updates, visit askleo.com 3072. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching.